Hi, I'm Nick Haig. I'm an Anglican priest and the vicar of the parishes of Fernhurst, Lynchmere and Camelsdale here in West Sussex. I get called all sorts of things in my role, in my job. Um, padre, father, hey you, obviously. But one I haven't heard for a while is sky pilot. The word actually originates from the 19th century, a pilot for a ship guided it through rough waters or into pass into uh, into harbour. A sky pilot guided their congregation, but it's more commonly associated with a chaplain to the armed forces. But I come across came across that recently, and I thought I like flying. I've always been into flying. Actually, I uh, was a member of the air training corps when I was in my teens, and I learned to fly gliders with them. We had uh, some interesting weekends at RAF Catterick, right up in the north there in North Yorkshire, and we used to fly these old things made of wood and fabric called Mark Threes, and they were launched by a big winch on a trailer with uh, thousands of uh, feet of cable. You attached it to the glider, and it reeled it in, and as it pulled you along the ground, you went up. And when you reached the best height, you pulled a big white sort of ball thing on the uh, front of the in the front of the cockpit, and it released the cable, and you sailed away. And well, we didn't really have much more height than to do a circuit of the aerodrome and land again. But that was great fun. I was always afraid of heights. I wondered what it'd be like flying. Even though I'd been fascinated with aeroplanes, I was always scared on top of high buildings. It still makes me a bit nervous, actually. But actually, being in the cockpit of an aircraft with the controls in my hand, the control stick, and then the rudder pedals, was a revelation. You can actually feel the air. You can feel the forces that are holding the glider up. You can feel when you put an input into the controls and work with the aircraft, or if you're not very good, against the aircraft, and see what happens. In fact, control what happens. It's a partnership. It's a partnership between the pilot and the aircraft, and indeed the wind. Our Gospel reading today talks about the promised Holy Spirit. I'll come back to that after I've read this. This is from John chapter 14 and verses 15 to 22. I'm reading from the Common English Bible. Jesus said, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will send another companion, who will be with you forever. This companion is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world can't receive, because it neither sees him nor recognises him. You know him, because he lives with you and will be in you. I won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live too. On that day you will know that I am in my Father. You are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Next Thursday... As I speak this, we're in that season where Easter is coming to an end, the great 50 days, and we come to Ascension next Thursday. And then on the last Sunday in May this year, the 31st, we have Pentecost, where the promised Holy Spirit is given. And what Jesus is talking about in our Gospel is precisely that promised Holy Spirit, his Spirit. And that's always been a bit of a conundrum because, well, we can't see Spirit, can we? 
In fact, it's been one of the major objections for belief or to belief by many people. I can't see it. Can't be there. God can't exist. I don't see him. I don't see any evidence. I don't see any sort of response. And that's something which is all to do with faith and our response, and our heart response to what God is saying. And of course it starts with scripture, but then we have to test these promises that Jesus makes and say, well, does it work? Can I commit myself to him? Can I throw myself on him? Will he fork, drop me? Is this all a waste of time? What about it? And that's, I think, what I'm talking about when I talk about aeroplanes and flight. Jesus used actually the imagery of the wind when he was talking about the Holy Spirit. You don't see where the wind comes from or where it goes, but you feel its effects. And that's a good way, well, it would be, wouldn't it, if Jesus said it, of describing the Holy Spirit. When you entrust yourself to him in faith, as I entrusted myself to that glider, which, uh, as I say, is about to made out of wood and fabric, the wings were held on by two metal rods and not much else really, it seemed to me. But as I entrusted myself to that, the experience was hugely rewarding. Because, as I said earlier, you can feel things. You know that this thing is doing what it's designed to do and you, as the pilot or as a passenger, are experiencing the reaction of the aircraft with the wind. It's a partnership and that's precisely what the promised Holy Spirit is for us. Translation I read today has Jesus saying you will have you will be sent a companion. You could also translate that word as advocate, somebody who speaks up for you in court, or helper, somebody who is with you every step of the way. I prefer to think of it as all three, because we can't tie God down to definitions, and that's who we're talking about when we talk about the Holy Spirit. We're talking about Jesus' Spirit, God's Spirit, living in each one of us. And the way it works is that we work in partnership. We entrust ourselves to him in faith. And as we do so, we feel his effects. We feel in our hearts what we should and shouldn't do. He works within us to change us, make us more like him, which is a process we don't understand and actually don't see. But it happens. Our passage started by Jesus saying, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Well, there are different readings of that. You'll find different Bibles, different versions say slightly different things there. But I think part of it, certainly, is that if we love Christ, if we show that love by faith, then we will be changed so that it feels wrong to break his commandments. And the major commandment, commandment is, of course, the first and most important commandment is to love God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and focus on him. Just as a pilot focuses on the interaction between the aircraft and the wind, the air, and should think of nothing else, many aircraft accidents have happened when the pilot was distracted or didn't work with the aircraft but against it. Or, well, you get the idea. The challenge today, the invitation of our reading, is simply to work with God as he works with us in a partnership. We haven't got to Pentecost yet in the church year, that's precisely two weeks away. But these readings prepare us to remember that event. It will be described in the traditional Pentecost Gospel, or the, the reading from Acts, rather, when tongues of fire appeared and settled on the Apostle's head in that room. That makes us think of all sorts of unhelpful images, perhaps. 
but what it means is that all of God's spirit, all of God's power is within us. He invites us to work with him and being God, anything is possible. Let's pray. Most powerful Holy Spirit, come down upon us and subdue us. From heaven, where the ordinary is made glorious and glory seems but ordinary, bathe us in the brilliance of your light, like dew. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. And now may God's holy, healing, enabling spirit be with you and guide you on your way at every change and challenge and circumstance in your life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.